There are four essential skills we need to acquire for our feet to be strong and functional enough to provide a solid base of support to our bodies. In this video, I'll discuss these skills and offer a targeted exercise to help you improve in each one. All right, let's jump into the first skill, which is all about mastering the art of toe splay. This spreading of the toes creates a three-point base that keeps you as steady as a tripod. But toe splay also helps aligning all the bones in our feet. When those bones are aligned, the intrinsic foot muscles which are tethered to those toes can tension up and uphold a proud foot arch. Want a live demo? Watch this. If I bunch up my toes and push my big toe into a classic bunion position, see how my foot arch drops. Now, if I spread my big toe and create some room between the other toes, voila, the arch comes back. Pretty cool, huh? It's no surprise then that research has linked toe misalignment issues like bunions to flat feet. But wait, there's more. The benefits of toe splay go beyond the foot arch. In James Earl's book, Born to Walk, he explores the intriguing link between the muscles of the toes and the quads. Without sufficient toe splay, those small toe muscles can't be tensioned enough to signal to the quads to activate and absorb the forces that come with each step one takes. A similar story can be seen with the glute's connection to the big toe. Proper great toe alignment ensures that the foot can fully extend during the push or phase when you walk. This toe extension is like a green light for your hip extension, helping our glutes fire up like they should. So can we just take a moment to marvel at this? Both the quads and glutes, the heavy lifters of the lower body, rely on the feet to function optimally during walking and running. It's like our feet are the unsung heroes of our entire upright existence. Pretty incredible. All right, let's dive into the exercise you've been waiting for. It's called the active toe spread out exercise. True to its name, your task is to spread out your toes as wide as possible. While it may sound basic, it's actually backed by research to effectively engage those intrinsic foot muscles. Fun fact, newborns instinctively perform this to kickstart their foot strength. Here are some clips of my daughters practicing this move during their first few weeks after birth. The best part, since the feet aren't bearing weight in this position, you can safely do this exercise as often as you'd like even while laying down. Now, some of you may encounter a situation where you find it difficult to spread your toes, almost as if they're stuck together. This is common and often due to wearing narrow, restrictive footwear for extended periods. The saying, use it or lose it, definitely applies here. If you run into this issue, your first step should be to switch to less restrictive shoes. We generally recommend barefoot shoes, which are designed to accommodate the natural shape of your feet. For additional help, consider silicone toe spaces. These can assist in retraining the toes to spread out. One study even found that the combination of these spaces and wide shoes yielded the most improvement in toe alignment. Links to our recommended barefoot shoes and silicone spaces can be found in the description below, or you can go to bfs.fit forward slash shoes. Moving on to the second essential barefoot skill, balancing on one foot. You may find this intriguing. When we're in motion, we're predominantly relying on one foot rather than both. Take walking, for instance. About 60 to 70% of the time, we're balancing on a single foot. And when it comes to running, that figure jumps to a full 100%. Pause for a moment and think about this. Our tall and wide bodies, often moving swiftly and over varied terrain, are supported primarily on one foot. It's clear then that to excel in these activities, our foot strength and stability need to be nothing short of rock solid. So how do we train this ability? The answer lies in the simple exercise of the single leg balance. According to a 2004 study, a six week single leg balancing program led to a significant increase in arch height among 11 participants. The researchers used two types of single leg balances. The first involved static balancing for a minute on each side for three sets. And the second included heel raises with a six second ascent and descent, also for a minute on each side for three sets. This routine was performed multiple times per week. Once you got your balance in check, the next skill to learn is how to effectively handle impact forces. This skill is crucial, particularly when we consider running. When you run, the impact forces from the ground can reach three to four times your body weight due to the interplay of gravity and the dynamics of the gait cycle. Now, for a bit of fun, let's do an interesting calculation. Imagine a hypothetical 70 kilogram person running a five kilometer distance. 
with an average stride length of 1.5 meters, they would take approximately 6,666 steps to complete the run. When you multiply the number of steps by the force of each impact, it turns out that this person experiences a cumulative force equivalent of around 1,867 tons during that 5km run. It's quite an eye-opener to the incredible forces we're up against even during a short jog. So it becomes clear why it's so important for us to efficiently absorb these impact forces. If we don't, our risk of injury spikes and with statistics showing that there's an up to 79% chance of a recreational runner incurring an injury within one year of continuous running, it's safe to say that many of us aren't moving as efficiently as we could be. The solution? We need to train our foot shock absorbers through the action of pronation, which in simpler terms is the controlled flattening of the foot arch. All of this, of course, in a safe and controlled manner. Here's a nifty exercise we developed to help train this ability. Take a small towel, fold it into a rectangle, then roll it up into a little sausage shape. Place this cloth sausage between your heels and apply pressure to keep it in place. From this position, simply hop up and down, ensuring the towel stays put. Why the towel? Well, it prevents our feet and ankles from collapsing inwards, a common issue known as overpronation in those with weaker feet. Remember, Good form is always the golden rule. For a more true to life carryover, try hopping to the beats of a metronome set between 160 and 180 beats per minute, as it mimics an ideal running cadence. You can amp up this challenge with added weight, or if you want to work your upper body and coordination, try incorporating a jump rope. For an extra benefit, slip on a pair of silicone spacers while jumping. They provide additional stability through assisted toe splay. And now let's dive into the final piece of the puzzle, developing a rock solid base for every step, jump, push or pull. This all comes down to having a stable foot, which is rooted in our ability to form a prominent arch through the action of supination. It's the flip side of pronation, which we discussed earlier as the flattening of the arch for absorbing impact forces. Same hardware, two completely different features. It's a testament to the incredible engineering of our feet. So the simplest way to build up your foot arch is to just exercise barefoot. A fascinating study showed that a mere four months of gradually increasing your barefoot exercise time can boost your arches by an impressive 4.7 millimeters. The magic word here, gradual. You wouldn't sprint into a five kilometer run on the treadmill or dive into a two hour weightlifting session barefoot on your first day. Maybe start with a barefoot warm up, then switch to shoes for the rest of your session, or pick certain exercises to do barefoot like deadlifts or kettlebell swings. As your feet adapt, you can slowly amp up your barefoot training volume. Even slipping into barefoot shoes can help. A recent study revealed that casually wearing minimalist footwear for six months can lead to an almost 60% increase in foot strength. But hey, I'm not going to just leave you with that. There are specific exercises to hone the unique ability to supinate our feet into the solid base required for force production. And one of these exercises is a gem we've developed for our strong feet course. We call it the single leg supinated heel raise. Ready for a sneak peek? Let's check it out. Start by towing one of your feet inwards at a 45 degree angle. Then balance on one leg. The next step is to press your toes into the ground with force until your heel lifts. You can use a table or chair for assistance while balancing on that leg. Because you have towed your foot inwards, you will feel your body rotate as you try to bring your hips forward. You can also use your opposite leg to accentuate the action. This rotation will help supinate the planted foot. Supination winds the lower limb in a stable and powerful position, similarly to how a dishcloth is wound tight when wringing water out of it. This rotational torque also helps to spread and splay the toes, which improves their alignment and widens one's base of support. So be sure to do this exercise barefoot so that your toes can spread out properly. And that's the fourth and final exercise to develop strong feet. You can check out our strong feet course here and you can watch more free content here. See you there.